Welcome back to Backyard Boatworks, guys. So this is part three of a multi-part series of how I built this custom transom mounted ice box. So if you're just finding this video for the first time, I suggest going back and watching part one and two first so you're not totally confused. So in part one, I kind of walked through building the rough enclosure using Nidacor around a flea market fiberglass bin that I picked up for 200 bucks. And then in part two, I start to fine tune the enclosure, trying to work through some high and low spots uh, in my layup. So if you're new here, subscribe and follow along. All right, it's hard to see in this, but um, this is a, a layer of the core mat uh, saturated in the resin. And I put that all the way across the front just because I have a little a dip like this uh, in the center. So I'm hoping the thickness of this will kind of solve that dip it's very very slight but and plus when i sand this down and then do a light skim coat of uh fairing compound it'll be a lot easier to make this consistently smooth across um, and then i continued these this core mat here and created a lip on the top and poured resin down the back side of it so now i'll sand this um, with the da sand that edge flush and then sand this flush and uh, now I have to come back because I doubled up this lip here, sand this all down as well, flush, and uh, should be good to go. So this is the next day and I finished um, putting the core mat on the side of this. You can see that it makes a nice radius and it covers a lot of the imperfections in the original uh, biaxial layup. So this transition will be nice and smooth. Um, and then again, I extended the lip up a little bit and then back poured some resin down into this So this will make a nice 90 degree angle. So I have this side to do and this side to do And I'm about to use the flat disc to grind this grind this uh, flush So I just finished finished sanding um, this side of the uh, the cabinet, and uh, you can see I, I blended. There's a line here where the the two pieces of core mat came together, and I just blend this down with the DA sander with uh, 60 grit, and then uh, I smooth smooth out the rest of it. Kind of hard to see because it's bright, but I moved over to this side and uh, doing the same thing here, just getting this radius cleaned up and then uh, try to take the core mat down so you can see some of the low spots um, so i've just tried to to get close to being flush all the way across it's, it's kind of some high spots here so i hit it with the dot the flat disc first to take off maybe a sixteenth of an inch and now i'm coming back uh, with the da sander um, to get it you know perfectly flat and smooth and uh, you can see nice 90 degree edges here again i i think i'm going to just put a small radius on this uh, with the router just to so there's not a, a sharp edge because the sharp edge if it gets hit with something on the boat it could crack the the paint of the gel coat so it's better to have a rounded edge So I just finished sanding both sides of the core mat and I sanded this front yesterday and uh, I mean you can see that it's it's perfectly smooth and fair and uh, probably just a light light skim coat of maybe thickened uh, resin or lightweight filler and uh, this really should be ready to go on the boat and uh, be primed and painted so I still need to clean up some of this top here probably put a light skim coat of filler along the top edge just to fill in some of these imperfections here and see where the resin um, is kind of a little high in this spot might take this down a little bit and uh, clean this up but I'm glad that I did this I was I was kind of hesitant um, but it made this radius here almost perfect which is really hard to get that with uh, biaxial without doing a lot of fairing and a lot of sanding so this core mat 
um, is something that I'll use a lot um, in situations like this. All right, so I just got finished laying a, a skim coat of a lightweight filler over the top just to kind of clean this up, but I'm gonna sneeze. So the next stage of the project is, and the reason why I had to get that all squared up is because now I need to make the top for the, for the ice box. So I already um, uh, sandwiched two pieces of 5 8 inch a night core together. I put a layer of chop strand mat in the middle and then I um, clamped them together and you know they so there's a layer of there's a layer of glass in the middle and then a layer of biaxial on one side and a layer of biaxial on the other side and I took extra caution to make sure that when I laid up these two pieces that um, that they stayed perfectly flat because what happens with the night core is because the heat of the polyester resin when you lay the nitocore or lay the biaxial on one side of the nitocore, it's going to heat up the nitocore and it's going to uh, have a tendency to warp. So I had to be very mindful to make sure that I laid this on a very flat piece and I actually put a strip of 1x3 wood over the top of it and laid a couple of cans of paint just to keep it down until it cured and then I flipped it over, put the biaxial on the other side um, and did the same thing. So. I needed to make sure that this was 100% square so that it would lay flat um, on the top of the box. <clears throat> this is a rough cutout of, to match the top of this. So now once that filler dries, I can, I'm gonna lay this on top of it and get this shape to match the shape of the box as close as I possibly can. And then what I need to do is come in here and trim out some of this plastic in the nitocore and then I'll come with epoxy uh, thickened epoxy and I'll fill in all of this edge and I'm gonna make special take special care to dig in extra deep at the top with this so that I have maybe at least a half inch thickness of epoxy because what my plan is is once I get this um, completely perpendicular uh, sanded smooth with the epoxy I'm gonna come through with a router and route probably a half inch uh, radius on the top. And because the epoxy is gonna be about a half inch deep, that'll give me enough epoxy to have an exposed epoxy edge after I route this off. So um, that's the plan right now, is to get this completely perpendicular to, to the box and then start to fill in this, this edge with the uh, epoxy, thickened epoxy. I'm also going to drop a couple screws uh, in through the top to hold this in place. Alright, it's crazy how the most simple things you think are gonna go quickly take forever so this took about a half an hour to sand this perfectly smooth but came out great I started with the belt sander and quickly realized that the belt sander was too hard to keep it perpendicular and it was digging into the face right here so I'm gonna have to put some filler right here it's hard to see it but it's a little taper um, so then I switched to the to the flat disc grinder and uh, it worked a lot better it, was a lot slower cutting because I have a dull uh, flat disc on there on purpose and uh, it's perfectly perfectly uh, 90 degrees perpendicular all the way around looks good I'm really really happy with how flush and square it sits with the bottom except for right here a little gap um, probably could fix that maybe with some filler we'll see so now the next step is to grind out this layer of nitocore and then fill this entire edge leading edge in with 
epoxy, thickened epoxy. All right, so I just finished laying uh, the thickened epoxy um, into the, the area that I recessed out of the Nidacore, and uh, I got it pretty close. The key with doing this is to not put a lot of pressure on the squeegee when you're pushing it into the, um, to the edge, because if you put pressure on the squeegee, then it kind of creates a dip, and it pulls the, the epoxy out instead of you know, laying it down in there. So, you want to try to drag the drag the squeegee across it almost perpendicular to the surface and uh, try to leave the surface of the epoxy a little bit um, taller than the the surface of the the glass edge um, it's really hard to get to nail it on the first attempt you'll probably always have to sand it and come back and do a skim coat um, on the second attempt so typically what I'll do is I'll sand this and get this uh, smooth, get all the little uh, bumps and divots out of it, and um, I'll let it cure for like a week, week and a half, and then if it's if it's uh, sanded really good and it's cleaned really good and it's cured for a week, week and a half, then you can put polyester filler over the top of it like a, a regular Bondo and it'll stick to it. Um, I've done it many, 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 many times on projects on the boat and I have no problems with uh, polyester products curing and sticking to the epoxy underneath. The key is to have it sanded very, very good, has to be perfectly cured and clean, clean, clean it, clean it very well. This is coming out really good. This is it's pretty solid, definitely solid enough to sand, but um, needs a little bit more time to cure. The epoxy takes a lot longer to set up. So um, I'll come in with the, the DA sander and sand that smooth and uh, maybe do another little skim coat on it to get it perfectly smooth. And then I'm gonna use the router to put a router edge on this. So that's a wrap for Sunday. Gonna clean up here uh, before the girlfriend freaks out about the mess. And uh, I'll see you next week.